Hello, respective viewers. This is British Poesy, my new channel. I'm George from Ireland. So it's a channel solely devoted to poetry from Ireland and Great Britain, because we Irish are British too. Anyhow, I'm going to uh, recite um, one of the most popular poems by William Butler Yeats. I'm not an aficionado of his, but I know many people hold him in the highest regard. So there follows a spare poem about um, a location I've been to. The locale is a little island in the middle of a, of a lake in um, a County Sligo, in the west of Ireland, where, where Yeats had some ancestral links. So here it is. The Lake Isle of Inishfree by William Butler Yeats. I will arise and go now and go to Inish Free, and a small cabin build there, of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rows will I have there, and a hive for the honey bee, and I will live alone in the bee loud glade, and I shall have some peace, peace there, for peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the vales of morning to where the cricket sings. There's midnight solar glimmer, and the noon a purple glow, an evening full of linnet's wings. I will arise and go now, for always night and day, I hear lake water lapping with sounds low by the shore, while I stand on the roadway, or on the pavement's grey, I hear it in my deep heart's core. So that was the poem Anyway, um, Yeats, in case you don't know about him, um, he's uh, from Ireland, he grew up in Dublin, pretty sure he was born there. His father, Jack Yeats, was a fairly well-known painter. His grandfather was a Church of Ireland clergyman at Drumcliff County, uh, Sligo, on the west coast. And indeed, that's where Yeats is buried. I've seen his um, uh, grave, and then it says on the headstone... Um, cast a cold eye on life, on death, pass by, something like that under lone Ben Bullion's head, the, the nearby um, mountain. So uh, Yeats, um, he uh, didn't go to school very much, never went near a university, um, was part of the um, uh, Gaelic cultural revival, even though I'm not sure he actually spoke Irish, and, and involved in the Irish Republican movement, as in that uh, group of people who believe that in Ireland we ought to sever all our links to our kith and kin in Great Britain and have a completely separate country um, and have a republic. And he joined the Irish Republican Brotherhood, a clandestine revolutionary organisation, eventually became chairman thereof, but um, never raised his hand against anyone, never used force, even though he supposedly dedicated to that. And wasn't even that old, the time of the Easter Rising in 1916 and the conflict Immediately after the First World War, but never put himself in harm's way. So it's all just posturing on his part. And despite uh, saying that, oh, England is evil, we've got nothing to do with him, he was a complete hypocrite and scumbag and lived in London despite thinking the English were the root of all evil. He was partly English. Right? You can obviously castigate England, England even if you're partly English or fully English. But anyway. And um, later moved to France, was in the 1930s. He had some operation later in life, on his skeins gland or something like that, which, which rekindled his libido and became, became more desirous of young fillies. And when he died in France, I think just after the Second World War had started, his body wasn't repatriated to Hibernia until after the Second World War. So um, an Irish naval service ship returned his carcass to West Britain about a decade after um, he shuffled off this mortal coil. So anyway, um, I said it's about this um, little island on that lake, and that eight was his muse when he was living in Dublin or possibly in London. Um, so it's pronounced Inish free, not Innis free. Inish just meaning island in Irish. Um, so wattles, I'm not, I'm not sure what that is. It's some sort of, is it the plant, is it the reeds you make the house out of? And many people would have dwelt in rude hutments of that nature, into the 19th century. So plenty about the bees there, some, some, some natural sweetener. So pining for the bucolic life, uh, for, for simplicity and rejecting technology, why don't you go and live there then? He could easily have done it, but he didn't. 
so peace comes dropping slow is often um, uh, a phrase we use when we're talking about making concessions to terrorists as they sometimes are made um, okay well midnight's a glimmer everywhere and a, and a purple glow uh, as you can tell I'm violently anti-rural I'm a metropolitan and a cosmopolitan sort linnets wings I don't know what those those insects are uh, yeah so there's something a little bit numinous there I've been on the shore looked at the island and it's scarcely a hundred a hundred yards across to get back and forth on a boat so uh, he, he's um, casting his mind back to that when he's on the pavements gray not everyone had pavements gray they're on dirt roads so when he's in a city like like um, uh, Dublin or Londinium feeling at his deep heart's core tautology but that's tolerable in poesy um, so I think overrated but uh, many people appreciate this most warmly. Toodaloo.